Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Metropolis Radio. Today, we are talking about Star Trek IV and why I personally believe that it is not happening. And an important note, this video was supposed to come out the day before, but there was a big power outage where I live. The power went down for over nine hours. So unfortunately, I couldn't get this video done sooner, and I do apologize for that. But anyway, getting back on topic, in this video, we will be exploring all of the times that Star Trek IV has been announced and then subsequently canceled. My argument is that Star Trek IV is probably not going to happen because of all these false starts that didn't lead anywhere. This is probably going to be a long video, but there is a lot to get through. So without further delay, let's explore all the times that Star Trek IV has been announced, and then cancelled, and then announced again, and end off with what I think the biggest hurdle is... What I think the biggest hurdle is that Star Trek IV is facing. But in order to understand Star Trek IV, we must first go back to the beginning. Dun dun dun! In June of 2015, more specifically on June 26, 2015, it was reported that Chris Pine, Zachary Quinto, and the rest of the Kelvin Timeline class were in renegotiations for a fourth Star Trek movie. The Hollywood Reporter at the time reported that the renegotiations cost Paramount and Skydance an extra $10 to $15 million for the budget of the fourth Star Trek movie at the time. A year later in 2016, just before Star Trek Beyond came out, Scott Mance of Access Hollywood broke the scoop that Chris Hemsworth was signed on to do Star Trek IV. For those that don't remember, Chris Hemsworth portrayed Kirk's father in the opening moments of Star Trek 09. On July 21st, 2016, the day before Star Trek Beyond premiered in theaters, Entertainment Weekly came out with an article where J.J. Abrams talks about the story of Star Trek IV. The article says, quote, So one of the reasons that I'm hoping Star Trek Beyond does so well is, is so that we can, without question, get that movie made, Abrams added. It really is an amazing story. It's really the reason we made the deal with Chris Hemsworth as soon as we could, because we really wanted that story to be told, so fingers crossed. In a press release on Monday, the studio added Star Trek IV would allow the living Captain Kirk, played by Chris Pine, to quote-unquote, cross paths with a man he never had a chance to meet, but whose legacy has haunted him since the day he was born, his father. So, Star Trek IV was being hyped up before the release of Star Trek Beyond. And just remember that, J.J. Abrams wanted Star Trek Beyond to do well just to get Star, just to get Star Trek IV made. Then Star Trek Beyond came out and... Star Trek Beyond comes out in theaters on July 22nd, 2016. Over its lifespan in theaters, it only grossed $343,471,816 worldwide against a production budget of $185 million. Star Trek Beyond actually grossed less than Star Trek 09 by roughly $50 million, not taking inflation into account. There are some reasons for this happening. Some will point to the Star Trek Axanar drama that involved Alec Peters getting sued by Paramount over his fan film, but... I argue that the seeds of Star Trek Beyond's destruction were sown back when Star Trek Into Darkness released. And more specifically, I think this one moment from Star Trek Into Darkness killed any potential that Star Trek Beyond had. I looked up John Harrison. Until a year ago, he didn't exist. John Harrison was a fiction created the moment I was awoken by your Admiral Marcus to help him advance his cause. A smokescreen to conceal my true identity. My name is Khan. A little bit of backstory. During the promotional tour for Star Trek Into Darkness, J.J. Abrams was assuring the fan base that Benedict Cumberbatch was not playing Khan. Benedict Cumberbatch was playing a new character named John Harrison. Well, from that snippet of the movie, we know that J.J. Abrams was a bold-faced liar. In fact, I argue that the Star Trek IP has never recovered after what happened with Star Trek Into Darkness. In fact, Star Trek Into Darkness made more money than Star Trek 09 did, proving that Star Trek 09 grew on the fan base within the four-year time span between sequels. So, that left Star Trek Beyond in a state where the legacy fans weren't going to get fooled again. <laughs> no! 
and the new fans that these Kelvin Timeline movies were being made for didn't show up to the theaters to see the movie, thus killing anything for Star Trek IV at the time, at least in terms of big-budget spectacle. On December 4th, 2017, Deadline Hollywood broke the scoop that Quentin Tarantino, the filmmaker behind Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction, Kill Bill, and Django Unchained, pitched a Star Trek movie to J.J. Abrams and Paramount. What we know now that wasn't known then was the movie was going to be based off an episode of Star Trek The Original Series. More specifically, the movie was going to be based on the Season 2 episode, A Piece of the Action. That episode featured the Enterprise crew visiting an Earth-like world, but Earth from the 1920s. Unsurprisingly, Tarantino wanted to make a gangster film. Three days after the initial scoop, it was revealed that a writer's room was built for Tarantino's Star Trek movie that included Lindsay Beer, Drew Pierce, the writer of Hotel Artemis and Mission Impossible Rogue Nation, Megan Amram, uh, she wrote four episodes of Parks and Rec and one episode of Silicon Valley, and Mark L. Smith, the writer behind The Revenant. Also, it came out that Tarantino wants to make his Star Trek movie R-rated, which according to Deadline Hollywood, both J.J. Abrams and Paramount agreed to those stipulations. The only real wrench in this engine at the time of the announced Tarantino Star Trek movie was he was working on Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Speaking to Slash Film on May 1st, 2019, the interviewer brought up Tarantino's Star Trek movie by asking the following, quote, I feel like I have to ask this even though I don't know if you'll want to answer, but are you going to make a Star Trek movie? Is there any truth to that? Here was Tarantino's response, quote, It's a very big possibility. I haven't been dealing with those guys for a while because I've been making my movie, but we've talked about a story and a script. The script has been written, and when I emerge my head like, and, and I'm going to mispronounce this name, and I do apologize, um, the script has been written, and when I and when I emerge my head like Puxatawney Pill post Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, we'll pick up talking about it again. End quote. It is unknown if this movie was going to serve as Star Trek IV or if it was going to be a reboot of sorts. According to Zachary Quinto, Tarantino's Star Trek movie was going to use the Kelvin Timeline cast, but Tarantino himself never confirmed this. He never confirmed that, as far as my research into Tarantino's Star Trek movie goes. Another thing that had people going in the news cycle was, was this Star Trek movie going to be Tarantino's last movie? For those that don't know, Tarantino has famously said that he will be retiring from filmmaking after 10 movies. Speaking to Cinnamon Blend on the Real Blend podcast, Tarantino said, quote, I guess I do have a loophole if the idea was to throw a loophole into it, which would be to go, uh, I guess Star Trek doesn't count. I can do Star Trek, but naturally I would end on an original. But the idea of doing 10 isn't to come up with a loophole. I actually think if I was going to do Star Trek, I should commit to it. It's my last movie. There should be nothing left there should be nothing left handed about it. I don't know if I'm going to do that, but that might happen. End quote. As time goes on, Deadline Hollywood reported that Tarantino was rethinking a Star Trek movie in December of 2019, with Tarantino saying, quote, I might be steering away from it, but we'll see. He said um, I haven't completely decided or talked to anyone involved. Nothing is official. But just one month later, in January of 2020, Tarantino announced he is not that he is not directing his Star Trek movie, with him telling Deadline Hollywood, quote, I think they might make that movie, but I just don't think I'm going to direct it. It's a good idea. They should definitely do it, and, and I'll be happy to come in and give them some notes on the, on the first rough cut. So... What was a promising movie? What was a promising movie following the disaster of Star Trek Beyond bit the dust. But there is a lot more to Star Trek for than just Tarantino coming on board. The Hollywood Reporter broke the scoop that S.J. Clarkson was tapped to direct Star Trek IV back in 2018. According to the article, Paramount, including J.J. Abrams, was hunting for a female director to head up Star Trek IV. At the time, it was seen as fashionable for the studios to hire female directors for their big projects. For instance, Ava DuVernay getting hired by Warner Bros. slash DC to direct The New Gods, which has been canceled, uh, Kathy Yan for Birds of Prey, and... Ugh, excuse me, and Chloe Zhao for what would be Eternals. However, just four months later, in August of 2018, renegotiations broke down with Chris Pine and Chris Hemsworth, with both walking away from the table, according to The Hollywood Reporter. 
at the time, renegotiations with Carl Urban, Zoe Saldana, Simon Pegg, and other Kelvin Timeline cast weren't reported. But now, the plan for Star Trek IV and having Kirk meet his father went out the window when Chris Hemsworth walked away from the, go- from the negotiating table. Star Trek IV also faced the prospect of not having Captain Kirk in it. So, you could say that Star Trek IV got double-boned in that regard. In an article from Variety published on May 28, 2019, Chris Hemsworth said he turned down Star Trek IV because of script issues saying, quote, I didn't feel like we landed on a reason to revisit that yet. I didn't want to be underwhelmed by what I was going to be... If I can talk today, let me restart. I didn't feel like we landed on a reason to revisit that yet. I didn't want to be underwhelmed by what I was going to bring to the table. There we go. I promise you I can talk today. After negotiations with Chris Pine and Hemsworth broke down, Deadline Hollywood reported that S.J. Clarkson jumped over to HBO to direct and executive produce one of the two Game of Thrones prequels, um... She would work on Blood Moon, which would be canceled, but not before HBO spent $30 million on the pilot episode. And it was stated in the article from Deadline Hollywood that S.J. Clarkson's Star Trek IV was, in fact, shelved. On November 19, 2019, Deadline Hollywood reported that Noah Hawley, the showrunner of FX's Fargo, had been tapped to direct Star Trek IV. It was believed to be Star Trek IV because sources told Variety at the time that Noah Hawley's Star Trek movie was going to feature the Kelvin Timeline cast despite Chris Pine walking away from the negotiating table about a year prior. This Star Trek movie would have been produced by J.J. Abrams, leading many to believe that it was Star Trek IV. So, here's where the story gets a little bit weird. On January 9, 2020, Deadline Hollywood published some snippets from a conversation that they had with Noah Hawley talking about Fargo and his upcoming Star Trek movie, and here's what the article says ver- verbatim. Quote, I have my own take on Star Trek, said Hawley when we asked him if the sequel if the sequel will feature most of the recent film's cast. Uh, quote, and going back to what I love going back to what I loved about the series Next Generation, when a lot of franchises focused on fo- focus on might make might makes right, Star Trek is about exploration and humanity at its best and diversity and creative problems and creative problem solving. There's nothing better that, than that moment when William Shatner puts on his reading glasses and lowers Khan's shields. It doesn't cost anything, but it's that triumphant feeling about smarting your enemy. For me, it's about getting to those elements of the show. I don't necessarily find action in in and of itself interesting unless it's story. So it's early days. I'm still talking with Paramount, and I have and I have a take, and I gotta write a script. In regards to connecting with Kurtzman's build out of the franchise and whether he'll connect with and whether he'll connect with him, Holly says, "Quote: I should. I know Alex. There is there isn't a mandate from Paramount to connect it." And on some levels, there's a bit of the wall, the TV version, the film version. Uh, quote, I have my own story and want to make sure and want to make sure, as I did with Fargo and Legion, that I'm respectful to the underlying material, that I'm not unintentionally changing things that people love or feel passionate about. So it's important to do that research as I go, says the Fargo creator. At the same time, The Hollywood Reporter posted a snippet from an upcoming podcast that they did with Holly that was going to drop in April of 2020, and here's, wh- and here's what he had to say regarding a Star Trek movie. Quote, To call it Star Trek IV is kind of a misnomer. I have my own take on the franchise as a, lo- as a lifelong fan. Let's repeat what Noah Hawley just said about a Star Trek movie now. To call it Star Trek IV is kind of a misnomer. I have my own take on the franchise as a lifelong fan. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, it gets better. In an interview with Variety published on September 17, 2020, here's what Noah Hawley said about his Star Trek movie there. Quote, We're not doing Kirk and we're not doing Picard, he says. Um, it's, it's a start from scratch that then allows us to do what we did with Fargo, where for the first three hours you go, oh, it really has nothing to do with the movie, and then you find the money. So you reward the audience with the thing that they love. End quote. So, Noah Hawley's Star Trek movie goes from being Star Trek IV to now being a complete reboot, according to Noah Hawley. All of this confusion and the fact that this wouldn't connect to J.J. Abrams' Star Trek, obviously, and what Alex Kurtzman was doing on CBS All Access, later renamed Paramount+, Plus, probably didn't help this movie. 
Now, on August 7, 2020, Deadline Hollywood posted an article about Emma Watts reconsidering the franchise. In that article, it was confirmed that Noah Hawley's Star Trek movie had been put on hold. Remember, interviews with the likes of Variety can be done weeks or months in advance. It is possible that Noah Hawley gave the interview with Variety before Emma Watts put his movie on hold. Allegedly, this movie's plot was going to center around a deadly virus, and given that COVID had just happened, it's not surprising that Paramount would want to steer clear of recent events. The exact same thing happened with Sam Raimi's Spider-Man. Sam Raimi's Spider-Man was originally set to come out in November of 2001, but then 9-11 happened. Spider-Man went through intense reshoots to get the Twin Towers out of the background of every shot they originally appeared in. And finally, in June of 2021, Noah Hawley revealed that production was about to commence on his Star Trek movie before Emma Watts pulled the plug. Here's what he said to Deadline Hollywood. Quote, that, su that sums it up perfectly. We were on the runway. There was major casting that we were in the middle of. We had a production schedule and I was getting ready to go to Australia. And then, as you said, new management. I guess in retrospect, what surprised me is not that Emma Watts came in and said, are you people crazy? This, uh, this is, this is, this is an, uh, this is an, uh, an untested crew. This is an original idea. We don't know if this is going to work or not. It's that I got as far as I did under former head of Paramount Motion Picture Group, Wick, Wick Godfrey, and Paramount President G, uh, Jim, G, uh, Jim Giannopoulos. It was a really fun movie, and I, th and, and I think it would have been a great film, but you can't control these things, so we move on. End quote. Well, if you're going to cancel a movie, it's better to cancel it before principal photography starts, before you sink too, be before you sink too much money into it. So... Noah Noah Hawley Star Trek went from starting out a Star Trek four went from starting out a Star Trek four before becoming a total reboot of the franchise. Who exactly was responsible for that decision remains unclear. In my opinion, it was a perfect storm. What probably happened was it originally was Star Trek four, but Chris Pine still didn't agree to come back for it. Therefore, instead of making Star Trek four without Captain Kirk, a reboot went underway. Then. COVID happened, and all of the major studios were reconsidering some of their projects and development. This just happened to be an easy target for elimination, given that the plot of Noah Hawley's Star Trek centered around a deadly virus, as reported by Deadline Hollywood. Would Noah Hawley's reboot have saved Star Trek on film? We simply don't know. And guys, this is a good spot for a little intermission. I know that this video has bombarded you with a lot of information, and there's more to come. See, so, you know what, let's take the next couple of minutes for just a little breather, and then we'll come right back to talking about Star Trek IV. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all... <laughs> Presenting McDonald's Star Trek Meal. Parents, take a good look. It's the only meal approved for your kids by the United Federation of Planets. Outside, the Enterprise, action, intrigue. Five exciting boxes based on Star Trek, the motion picture. Inside, a regular hamburger, fries, soft drink, a McDonald's and cookie sampler, and a Star Trek prize. Star Trek Meal, games, jokes, puzzles. Your kids will love them. McDonald's Star Trek Meal. I bet that pizza tastes good. Mm-hmm. You've never seen a place like Showbiz Pizza Place. We'll serve you a pizza second to none. So come for the pizza. Stay for the fun. Now, Showbiz has four delicious new sandwiches. Get a free Pepsi with a hot ham and cheese, roast beef, turkey, or three-meat submarine for only $1.99. So come for the pizza. Stay for the fun. We're at Monster Stadium. Frankenberry steps to the plate. I'll fill it with my delicious strawberry flavored cereal, Frankenberry. You're out! A good nutritious breakfast with Count Chocula is a real hit. Frankenberry. Count Chocula. Both you guys are dying. <laughs> Star Trek, the motion picture, collector's close ups. It's Mr. Spock. And Lieutenant Uhura. You can get Star Trek, the motion picture, collector's close ups. Two on each specially marked box of the Monster Cereals.
Everybody knows the A&W Great Root Beer loves a glass of A&W Great Root Beer. The rich and creamy real draft root beer. And since you and your family love our famous root beer, you'll love to get a hold of our big new 16-ounce root beer glasses. And for only 79 cents, you can hug the root beer you love and keep the glass. So start a collection today because supplies are limited at your participating A&W family restaurant. Now back to G.I. Joe. On July 13, 2021, Deadline Hollywood reported that WandaVision's Matt Shakeman or Matt Shockman, I apologize, I still have not heard his name pronounced. So for the sake of this video, I'm just going to call him Matt Shakeman. Um, WandaVision's Matt Shakeman was tapped to direct a Star Trek movie for Paramount. The movie would be written by Lindsay Beer and Geneva Robertson Dwart. If you remember from earlier, Lindsay Beer was one of the writers assembled for Quentin Tarantino's Star Trek movie back in 2017. This movie had a release date of June 9th, 2023. On November 10th of 2021, Variety reported that the release date for Matt Shakeman's Star Trek movie had been pushed back to December 22nd, 2023 to accommodate Transformers Rise of the Beasts being delayed by a whole year. At the time, this mystery Star Trek movie was just that, a mystery. It wasn't known if this movie was Star Trek 4 or if this was another reboot like Noah Hawley's Star Trek was turning out to be. Deadline Hollywood also revealed that Emma Watts pushed hard to land Matt Shakeman for Star Trek. But the problem still lied of what but the problem still lied of what was Matt Shakeman's Star Trek even going to be? On February 15th, 2022, during Paramount's in, during Paramount Investors Day, the announcement was made that Paramount had planned to re-enter negotiations with the Kelvin Timeline cast to bring them back for a new Star Trek movie. J.J. Abrams, during the event, made this statement regarding the new Star Trek movie. Quote, We are thrilled to say that we are, we are hard at work on a new Star Trek film that will be shooting by the end of the year, that will be featuring our original cast and some new characters that I think are going to be really fun and exciting and help take Star Trek into areas that you've just never seen before. We're thrilled about this film. We have a bunch of other stories that we're talking about that we that we think will be really exciting. So can't wait for you to see what we're cooking up. But until then, live long and prosper. End quote. It was also confirmed that Matt Shakeman would still direct the movie, but the script had been rewritten by Josh Friedman, who worked on Avatar 2, and Cameron Squires, who worked on WandaVision, that was based on the earlier draft by Lindsay Beer and Geneva Robertson Dwart, which, to be fair, is very common practice for a franchise film to go through multiple iterations before landing on a, fi before landing on a final shooting script. Uh, it was also revealed by Variety that they had insiders saying that Paramount had been doing market research to see if there was enough demand to bring back the Kelvin timeline cast for Star Trek IV. To most people, this was just another announcement of Star Trek IV, but here's where this version of Star Trek IV starts to get, it starts to get rather interesting. On February 22nd, 2022, one week after the Paramount Investors Day announcement, The Hollywood Reporter revealed that most, if not all of the major players of the Kelvin timeline, Chris Pine, Zachary Quinto, Zoe Saldana, Carl Urban, Simon Pegg, and John Cho, were not informed of a Star Trek IV announcement, let alone the fact that they would be used to sell a Star Trek movie at Paramount's Investors Day, and also the fact that they would be shooting said movie by year's end of 2022. The Hollywood Reporter had reports from insiders that Chris Pine was the first to enter renegotiations because he is the linchpin of the movie. How are you going to bring back the Kelvin Timeline cast without Captain Kirk? S.J. Clarkson's Star Trek IV was shelved after both Chris Pine and Hemsworth walked away from the table in 2018. However, on March 10th, 2022, Chris Pine, while out promoting his newest movie at the time, All the, All the Old Knives, expressed his enthusiasm for Star Trek IV while talking to the Associated Press. Yeah, of course. I would love to. I'm thrilled. I think this is the best gig of all time. Um, looking forward to reading a script, looking forward to getting back to work, looking forward to seeing the rest of the gang, and yeah. 
Then Zoe Saldana on February 28th, 2022 would also express interest in doing Star Trek 4 at the premiere of The Atom Project while talking with Entertainment Tonight. We're excited. Obviously, it's bittersweet because we are coming together for a fourth time and one of us is, is, is no longer with us. But um, with Anton's passing, but we honestly feel that that, you know, going back and keeping the Star Trek kind of family together is a way to really keep him alive in our thoughts and in our hearts because he was such a fan and he was such a devoted um, artist to the craft and also to Star Trek. So it would be it would be great to go back to work and, and get to, you know, be together with the gang. I know that the Zoe Saldana clip was older, but Chris Pine is more important of the two, if you ask me. You know, who's who's more integral to Star Trek? Is it Captain Kirk or is it Lieutenant Uhura? Uh, finally, we have Carl Urban talking, talking about it to Variety at South by Southwest 2022, but expressing concern that the movie could interfere with his production schedule on The Boys. Um, thank you guys so much for your time. Carl, before I have to ask you, is there a Star Trek script? Have you seen it? I haven't seen a script. I know nothing. I, I don't but your know. schedule's on hold. My, my what? <laughs> Isn't your schedule? You're supposed to go back, right? The end of the year. I'm shooting the boys uh, the in, through the end of the year, so I, I literally don't know. I would love to work with those guys again. They're so much fun. The best hang. We'll see. Of all the times that Star Trek Four could happen, this one looked like the one that was going to happen. However. We come to our most recent piece of news as of the writing of this video. On August 26, 2022, The Hollywood Reporter reported that Matt Shakeman had dropped out of directing Star Trek IV in favor of the MCU's Fantastic Four, which is set to come out in 2024. Here is what Paramount Pictures said in a statement, quote, Matt Shakeman is an incredibly talented filmmaker, and we regret the timing didn't align for him to direct our upcoming Star Trek film. We are grateful for his many contributions and are, ex are excited about the creative vision of this next chapter and looking forward to bringing it to audiences all around the world. End quote. A search for a new director had begun, but at the time of writing this video, no news of a new director for Star Trek 4 had been announced. It is unknown if any of the cast had also signed on to do Star Trek 4 also at the time of writing this video. And this is where the facts of the video end. In my opinion, there is one major thing that is going to stand in the way of Star Trek IV. It may be so big that Star Trek IV just never gets off the ground, but it's something that we have to address when talking about Star Trek IV. Remember what I said earlier. I argue that Star Trek never fully recovered from the damage caused by Star Trek Into Darkness. Since then, there have been other space exploration shows that have come out, like Final Space, The Orville, The Expanse, Dark Matter, the list goes on and on. One other thing that Star Trek IV has to contend with that the J.J. Abrams movies and Star Trek Beyond didn't have to contend with is the Paramount Plus Star Trek shows. For better or for worse, there's now Star Trek Discovery, Picard, Lower Decks, Strange New Worlds, and Prodigy at the time of writing this video. All of those shows, again, for better or for worse, have their own fan bases. None of those shows, again, at the time of writing this video, have made any connections to the J.J. Abrams Star Trek movies. Some of them have referenced the J.J. Abrams Star Trek movies. I can think of uh, Lower Decks and... Um, the most recent episode at the time of recording this, at the time of writing and recording this video, they did the skydiving scene in the uh, second episode of the of the third season. Um, bu -bu 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 uh, but here we go. Star Trek Discovery's marketing went out of their way to say that the show was set in the prime timeline and not the Kelvin timeline. Strange New Worlds is a spinoff of Discovery, so that's also set in the prime timeline. Star Trek Picard and Lower Decks are both set after the events of Star Trek Nemesis. Lower Decks revealed this by showing the USS Titan on screen with Captain William Riker in the season one finale. Star Trek Picard is just a given. The only show that I'm not familiar with is Prodigy, but that show features a hologram of Janeway, the captain of the USS Voyager played by Kate Mulgrew. Again, Star Trek Voyager is set during the Prime Timeline, not the Kelvin Timeline. Paramount can come out and claim that market research has shown that there is demand for the Kelvin timeline. 
but none of the Star Trek shows on Paramount Plus, as of the writing of this video, are making any attempt to connect to it. Therefore, there are now two competing Star Treks. That could lead to an even bigger brand confusion, given that the Kelvin Timeline movies followed the USS Enterprise during the time of Captain Kirk, and Discovery takes place 10 years prior to it. Is there a plan to show Captain Pike handing off the USS Enterprise to Kirk on Star Trek Strange New Worlds? Because if that's the case, then that could contradict Star Trek 09. What, what would have been better for Star Trek on film was Noah Hawley's movie, because that was going to be a complete reboot. That way, you can follow a new ship with new characters and reserve them just for the movies. No worries about having to connect them to the Paramount Plus shows or the J.J. Abrams Star Trek movies. But at the end of the day, let's all be honest here, the fourth Kelvin Timeline Star Trek movie is probably not going to happen. Not meaning to sound pessimistic, but there's only so many times that you can get excited for a Star Trek 4 announcement just to have it fall through within six months to a year, within six months to a year of the announcement. And this is where I'm going to end this video. Let me know what you guys think. Will Star Trek 4 happen? Is it for the better that Star Trek 4 isn't happening? Do you want Star Trek 4 to be made? Personally, I just can't care anymore.